Who knows the shape of a child? Will they be happy, sad, hopeful, defeated? What roads will they travel? Who will be there to guide them? What happens when the child has to become the parent? When the guide can't find a compass? Will the child survive, falter, rise? This is the story of a child. Lissa's mom is mentally ill. She's had a hard time coping with everyday affairs. At about age eight, Lissa took it upon herself to research Kernhattan. Kernhattan is a special place. It's so unique. It provides opportunity for children and their families that are struggling or have challenges. And it's been doing that for over 100 years. Children come to Kernhattan homes for many different reasons. And I think they come here and they're worried about their home life. They're worried about their families. Lissa had a lot of stress on her because she often wanted to take care of her mom and help with that situation. But when you're in fifth and sixth grade, you're not equipped to handle that type of a challenge. And grandma knew that. And um, she wanted her granddaughter to have an opportunity to be a child, yet still be connected to her mom. And Kern Hatton worked for that family. She felt secure, protected, she felt cared for. I think we really helped her do that. Relax, be a child, have fun, be happy. Number one, be happy. Not worry so much about everything else in your life. Lissa Jackson came here like a ball of fire. She uh, was great in the arts. She came here and that first week she must have been amazed at, at athletics where we don't cut kids from the teams. Everyone gets a chance to play. A horse program where kids could learn about manicuring and taking care of an animal. Lissa is probably one of the most talented, genuine, caring, thoughtful, amazing students we've ever had here. She believes strongly, as a, as a student here, that our best attribute is how we treat each other and how we help those less fortunate. We were able to help Lissa for the four years that she was here until she graduated, graduated uh, eighth grade and then knew that she wasn't finished. I recognized in her so many amazing qualities that I suggested that she try to get a scholarship at a school locally and that was the Putney School in Vermont. Putney was an amazing adventure for her. She loved it there. And I recognized in Lissa a maturity and kind of a, a, a wise soul sort of quality to her. She sort of had her act together in a way that most ninth graders don't. I think she had to learn to be self-reliant much younger than a lot of kids did. Um, but she also learned at Cranhattan how to be a contributing part of a community. And she just had a sense of direction about her that is pretty rare for, for a student that age. She is incredibly generous and incredibly considerate and nice and kind. Lissa was always there and she was always happy. There were stressful times you know, between college applications and senior exhibitions, but she was always there and there was always tea. Watching her learn how to knit was pretty funny. <laughs> She's an incredibly gifted weaver, but the struggle to learn how to knit was really funny. I'm a big knitter and I've done a lot of it, and so she'd come to me for help, and it was just like something wasn't going in. L Lissa could uh, be a little bit of a cut up. 
but it was always appropriate. We were doing an eighth grade fundraiser for the trips, and um, we were doing singing valentines. And Lissa came up with all of the moves for the singing yes. valentines. And we would go out in the public, and she'd get right on her knees in front of these men that were much older oh, yeah. and sing, let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with I'm, yeah, you. I'm in love with, with you. you. She did all these moves. All the moves, yeah. dead serious. These people would be like, whoa. Let, let me call you sweetheart. sweetheart. The big finale. I'm, I'm in love with you. you. <laughs> She'd been doing an art history class and she also loved to weave in our weaving studio and so she decided to look at tapestries that were in these renaissance paintings as the backdrops and weave the, those tapestries and they're stunning i mean it was an incredible piece of work um, that she did but also the idea would not have occurred to most of us when we were 17 <laughs> even to think about doing something like that and she has that kind of an imagination as well so we have two students on the Board of Trustees at all times, which is considered very odd in the independent school world. But listening to her talk in a board meeting, you would think she was 35. And she has the way of sitting up very straight and her lower lip sticks out just a little bit, you know, and she's just determined. And not in an aggressive way, but just in an incredible poise for a kid of her age. She had always talked about how much Kern Hatton meant to her, and she never um, hesitated to be proud of the fact that she had been in that community and how well it had served her. So she brought her proposal to school council to have a work day to raise funds for Kern Hatton. I can't honestly remember what the other presentations were because nobody else had a chance at that point once Lissa got going, because she had her own story as well and she could explain why it was so important to her and to Kern Hatton and that it was in some senses tangible because students could see what difference it would make. And I was the fortunate individual that got to receive the check from that fundraising uh, event. So it, it was very special. Often alumni come back and will give us things and donate, but it doesn't happen when they're in high school. Ever since she was a little girl, no matter what situation she's been in, she's made the best of it. She's a survivor, but a survivor that doesn't carry that, the weight of, of guilt and trauma and you know being stuck in a place where you can't move forward. She has always been moving forward. She was here for a purpose, as we all are, and she took it strongly that her purpose was to make life better. And she had to make herself better before she could make the lives of others better. Lisa. Mr. Fawner here. You know I've been so proud of you in the past, I'm especially proud of you receiving this award. It's well deserved. I know how you feel about Kern Hatton. You know how we feel about you. Congratulations. I wish you all the continued best in Skidmore and then in your endeavors after that. You take care. Congratulations, Lissa. You really deserve this. Lissa, we are so proud of you. You are doing everything we thought you could do. Just keep doing it. Come back and visit us. We love you, and we are so, so proud of you. I know you'll continue to do amazing things for the rest of your time at Skidmore and way beyond. So we will continue to keep in touch. Love you always. Lissa, I am so proud to be your friend. You are so spectacular, and I can't wait to see what else you do. What is there to say? Um, congratulations. This is huge, and I love you. Congratulations, Lissa. This is exciting. You deserve it, and I can't wait to see you back at school again soon. Today's one of those days I can also say, as a fourth daughter, you've made me the most proud of any day I've known you. Thank you, Lissa. I know that you're going to affect lots of people's lives. You already have including my own and including the Putney community. So congratulations, you are doing amazing things and I'm very excited to see where the road takes you. Congratulations, Lissa, on all of your accomplishments. I am so very proud of you. Yeah.